ultimately if you you know if if they see it as overall ways of improving what they do and the services they deliver to young people then I think that's probably what it it means to me and what it means to most of the youth groups on the ground. So quality is about process, it's about practice, it's about what you do and doing it in a way that's of a good standard and if you do the right things in the right way then you bring about a difference for communities and individuals. For me it means being a reflective practitioner, it means trying to ensure that we're being a needs-led provision rather than a resource-led or whatever led provision. I think quality and, and continuous improvement has always mattered to us but I think it matters particularly just now because of the climate that we're in of, of having to evidence that we're, we're making a, a difference. It helps to ensure that what your organisation and you as practitioners provide is relevant and of use. It's about making sure that there are processes that are built in for continually assessing very robustly the, the needs that are out there, the potential for affecting change, um, to make sure that you're using your resources and targeting your resources as wisely as possible and with as much benefit to service users and communities as possible. I think quality and continuous improvement, if you asked your average service user or someone who's in, obviously engaging with the services what it looks like, to them it means just getting a good service, a good quality service that, that can change, that can develop over time, that's responsive to their needs. Um, and it's got kind of yeah, quality people there, you know, folk who are competent to do their jobs um, and can actually deliver what needs to be delivered. I think a good quality service is one that is responsive and meets the needs of the people who are using the service, so listens to them and provides it in a way that they want it to be delivered. And I think CLD have got that in spades. I think if you ask what does quality and continuous improvement look like, um, I think quite simply it looks like good to practice and I think you know across Scotland there are many many uh, different examples of, of good practice whether it's working with communities or working with young people or certainly you know working with with, with adults um, and if we think about it in those broad terms then we are certainly uh, it would be helpful for us to share um, those examples of good practice learn from it uh, and hopefully take that on board so that we can improve what we do. What helps is to have a supportive management um, structure, I guess, in place that not only allows that to happen, but more than that, it facilitates it and enables that to happen in a meaningful way. Yeah, we, we talk quite a lot about um, peer support, I suppose, your networks, mm -hmm. and uh, we talked about having students uh, in our organisations and the, you know, the people coming in and having a critical view on what you do and how you work is actually very important and that you know, we probably could do more about trying to encourage that kind of external focus, having to explain what we do to people who maybe don't understand it is quite quite important yeah. uh, in, in kind of holding yourself to account and actually thinking clearly about what you're doing. So I think we need to encourage networks um, and exchanges probably more than we do at the moment just to give people that chance to yeah. reflect with each other and be critical to each other in, in a kind of supportive atmosphere if possible. I think it's also important to have a really strong sense of purpose collectively within an organisation. Um, it would be difficult to affect continuous improvement if everyone's going off in different directions. So it's important to kind of plan collectively and evaluate collectively and have a really strong sense of what it is you're trying to achieve as a team or as an organisation.